this is the button. Okay, uh, so it's time to start. Um, let me introduce the today's speaker, which is uh, William Demar uh, of Charles University currently. He will talk about the homomorphism problem for Boolean structures. It's all, all yours. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. So today I'd like to talk about this problem we've been working on, uh, homomorphism problem for uh, Boolean structures. So this is a general homomorphism problem, not just for relational structures, but for structures that could have relations and operations. And I first want, before I get into this, I want to thank uh, the organizer, Jakub, you've done a great, a great deed uh, organizing these lectures because this is uh, really amazing. This is my first Zoom lecture ever. And uh, very excited. Thank you for inviting me to do this. And also, I want to thank my uh, colleagues, Libor Bardo and Antoine Motte, because they have contributed significantly to this work. And without them, I'm not sure uh, I would be able to do it. And well, maybe I would, but it would take many times longer. So. I really appreciate uh, working with them. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, what is this problem we're talking about? Uh, so we managed to prove this new dichotomy result for um, for general structures. Well, not quite general, but for Boolean structures. So if you consider an arbitrary sig finite signature S, so S could have relation symbols as well as operation symbols. And then if you take a, um, a Boolean structure B, the problem of deciding if you're given another S structure A, is there homomorphism from A to B? This is either in P or NP complete. So this is seems maybe it seems like, well, that's already been done uh, by uh, Schaefer, right? This um, this dichotomy has already been proved by Schaefer for Boolean structures. Well, not only for Boolean relational structures, but what, what we've done is extended this to arbitrary structures with relations and operations. So let's talk about um, the background and motivation for this. So we're trying to study a generalization of the finite template CSP over an arbitrary finite structure. So where we allow both relation symbols and operation symbols in the signature. So this is generally generalization of Schaefer's dichotomy theorem for relational Boolean structures from relational Boolean structures to arbitrary Boolean structures. So we've only done this so far for Boolean structures. That's why we're calling it a generalization of Schaefer's result. But still, there's, there's no uh, general theory for CSP over arbit arbitrary structures, right? So what we've done so far is only for arbitrary structures, uh, assuming that the template is Boolean. So the universe only has zero and one. Okay, so the main result that we have is a generalization of Schaeffer's dichotomies to, uh, to structures with relations and operations. And the theorem that we proved is that if B is a Boolean structure with finitely many relations and operations, then the CSP of B is in P or it's NP complete. And to state this more precisely, what we actually proved uh, will need uh, definition, which most of you are probably familiar with. Um, so we, we say that an n-ary function uh, is essentially unary if there exists an i and a possibly constant function g such that this, uh, we have this um, equation holds, right? So it just means that either f is constant or it depends on um, one variable of its arguments. Okay, uh, so 
Um, right. So then the theorem that we proved is that if, if B is a Boolean structure, then the CSP of B is in P if B has an operation that is not essentially unary, or there exists a polymorphism of the graph of B, which I'll explain what that is in a minute, that is constant or not, not essentially unary. Um, and if all functions in B are essentially unary, then the CSP of B is equivalent to the CSP of the graph of B. So I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with what this graph of B is, but let me just um, try to explain what that is. So we have uh, this structure B. Whoops. Uh, okay, let me try that again. So B is the structure with some universe and some operations and relations maybe. And then the graph of B, which I'm calling script G of B, that's uh, the structure with um, where the universe is the same, but the, the um, operations, well, the, it only has relations and the relations are the relations of B as well as the relations you get from uh, from viewing the operations as relations, right? So if you take an operation uh, F, let's say, and it goes from B to the N to B, then we will instead view that as an operate uh, as a relation that uh, is a relation in, so we'll view that, we'll view the relation of F as a relation in B to the n plus one, where you have uh, n tuples of b that you plug into f, and then you get some output, and that output is the n plus first element of the of the tuple that's in the relation. Does that make sense? I'm not sure I explained that very well, but in any case, what, what we're doing is we're you, when you view uh, an operation as a relation. Uh, that's what we're considering the graph, this graph of, of B. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, if it's not, please feel free to stop me. Okay, so uh, let's move on. And uh, so let me explain how this result is a bit stronger than what I stated. So what did I state? I said that that we have this result that the CSP of B is either in P or it's uh, NP complete for these Boolean structures. But actually, we proved something a little bit stronger, which says that uh, under the above conditions on B, which is that B is this Boolean structure, so it's it's uh, the universe is zero and one, and it has a finite arity, so finite finitely many operations and finitely many relations, and these are of finite arity. Um, then in that case, there's at most a polynomial number of homomorphisms from each instance of CSP B to B. Okay, so not only do we know that it's in uh, P or in P or in B complete, but also we can put a bound on the number of homomorphisms. And uh, we can effectively enumerate these. In fact, that's how we prove that this is uh, in NP or in P. Right, so that gives us this polynomial algorithm for CSP of B. Okay, so so what has been done already in this problem? Of course, a lot of work in CSP has been done for uh, the constraint satisfaction problem for relational structures, but not much has been done for structures that have relations and operations. The only work we know of is this work of um, Feder and Madeleine and Stewart, this paper from 2004, dichotomies for classes of homomorphism problems involving unary functions. And they show that purely algebraic CSP generalizes to the relational one in the following sense. Each CSP of a finite relational structure is equivalent to a CSP of a finite algebraic structure modulo polynomial time Turing reductions. So in other words, they look at relational structures and they say, oh, this is actually equivalent to if you made this into an algebraic structure, right? But 
modular polynomial time Turing reductions, not many to one reductions. So that's one caveat. But um, we will show that in general, there's no polynomial time reduction from CSP of the graph of B to the CSP of B. Okay, but but this, so I'm gonna use this uh, abbreviation for the duration of this talk. FMS refers to uh, Federer, Mendelin, and Stewart. And they prove that, they prove this reduction from the CSP of the graph of B to the CSP of B when all operations of B are essentially unary. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, so their theorem, which I'll call the FMS theorem, says that for a structure B whose operation symbols are at most unary, the CSB of B is equivalent to the CSB of the graph of B by a poly polynomial time many one reductions. Okay, so for this one, they actually achieve this many one reductions result. Um, so this is a really nice result. Um, but the theorem doesn't extend to structures with operations of higher arity. So only when, uh, when, uh, as I as I mentioned here. Oops, sorry about this. Uh, yeah. So for these structures where the operation symbols are at most unary, they have this result. But if you um, consider structures with operations that have higher arity, this result doesn't, doesn't obtain. And we'll give an example where we have just a two element uh, algebra with a single binary operation for which the result fails. Yeah, sorry, sorry, William, can I, can I stop you for a minute? There is a yes. question in chat from Katarina. She's yes. asking uh, whether the difference with uh, the value setting is that an, an operation can output a tuple rather than a single value. Is that correct? Can you repeat that question? The difference with the value setting that uh, is that uh, an operation can output a tuple rather than a single value. Okay. I can I, uh, should I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, can you can you um, William? Can you can you tell me what is an, an operation exactly? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. Well, and what's the difference with a, with a with a function? This was my question essentially. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So an operation. I mean, we're only considering if you have uh, so an operation on. Sorry, this is my first time using this. An operation on a set B is just a function from some power of B to B. All right, so. Okay, okay, I got, okay. It's not gen a general operation, it's not a general function. Okay. An, op an operation okay. has domain some power of B. An operation on B has domain some power of B and codomain is B. Yeah, sure, okay, thank you. Okay, thanks for the question. Okay, so uh, shall we resume? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm gonna go through some background now. So the, the border between P and NP complete in Schaefer's dichotomy theorem can be described in terms of, in terms of polymorphisms. For a binary relational structure B, CSP of B is in P if, P if B has a polymorphism that is constant or not essentially unary. Um, and I think, did I already define essentially unary? I don't think I did. Sorry, I wanna make sure that I, I did. Yes, okay, good. So we covered what essentially unary means, okay. Okay, um, and otherwise it's NP complete. Okay, and the discovery of the role of polymorphisms for relational CSP has obviously had a big impact on, um, on CSP in general, uh, as you can see in some results that I'm citing here. And, and these made it possible to conjecture this borderline between P and NP complete CSPs over non boolean domains. And these were important for generalizations to infinite domains 
and chroma CSPs, LU CSPs, and we don't have analogs of any of these results for uh, the non-relational setting. So as soon as you put in some operations in your structures, the theory is still wide open. So I think this opens up a lot of interesting questions for future work. Okay, so let's talk about some reductions. Here's a fact that a map from a structure A to B is a homomorphism, if and only if it's a homomorphism from the graph of A to the graph of B. This is a very uh, easy to prove result. And therefore you get that the CSP of B is reducible to the CSP of the graph of B, um, where the reduction is a map from an instance of the CSP of B to the instance of you just take the graph of the instance. Okay, that's sort of obvious. Um, and uh, so just to review some definitions that we're going to need in the lemmas that we use in our proof, uh, quantifier free primitive positive formula in a signature S is just a conjunction of atomic S formulas. And two S structures A and B over the same domain are called term equivalent if for every operation of the first structure, there exists a term, an S term, such that this operation is, is equal to that S term for every tuple. Okay, and conversely, for every operation of the latter structure, you can find a term such that this, uh, this operation is equal to that term. Okay. So we're going to use this term equivalence in our, our lemmas that I'm about to go through. So the first is lemma is that- if, William, can, I just ask you, can, I, uh, can I disturb you for a second? Yes, sure. Uh, so, so the term equivalence of these structures, uh, it does not say anything about, about the relations. It just, you forget oh, about right. the relations and you just compare the algebras, right? Yes, it's basically just about the operations, yeah. So okay, thanks. Right. Okay, so if you have a signature and uh, you have some structure in that signature and you have some finite set of identities in, in that signature, such that B models all over those identities, then for every instance of CSP of B, we can compute in polynomial time an instance Y such that Y models those identities and the instance X has a homomorphism B if and only if it has a homomorphism, if and only if Y has a homomorphism to B. Okay, uh, that's the first result we'll use. And the second is that if you have two structures that are term equivalent, and you suppose that every relation of A is, has a quantifier free primitive positive definition in B, then CSP of A has a, polynom has a polynomial time many one reduction to the CSP of B. Okay, so does this make sense? Okay, as a corollary, we retain this uh, algebraic invariant for complexity of CSP of finite structures. So recall a partial operation is a partial polymorphism if so, is it what a partial a partial operation is? It's just this operation that's defined on some parts of the domain, but possibly not all of the domain. And it's a partial polymorphism if for all relations R and for all tuples in the relation, if you plug those tuples in to this function H, wherever it's defined, then it's in R. Right, so it doesn't have to be defined everywhere, but if it is defined, then it belongs to the relation. And of course, this I, uh, I'm expecting it's assumed that this evaluation of H on all of these tuples is evaluated component-wise. Right, so H is is uh, an n-ary operation or an n-ary function from R to B and R to the n to B, and then we've got these tuples uh, in R, and when you plug them into R to H, you just take it component-wise, and the result 
if it's defined has to belong to R. Okay. There's this result of Roma from 1981 that says, if you've got two finite relational structures, such that every partial poly polymorphism of B is also a par partial polymorphism of A, then the relations of A have a quantifier free PP definitions in B. Okay, so we're going to use this result. And uh, the corollary of this is that for a finite structure B, the complexity of the CSP of B depends only on the clone, of, the clone generated by the basic operations of B and the set of partial polymorphisms of the relational reduct of B. So the relational reduct is just throw away the operations and just consider B with its relations. Okay, so in the Boolean case, the complexity of CSP depends only on the clone generated by the basic operations of B and the total polymorphisms of B. Okay, so we don't have to consider the partial polymorphisms in this case. Uh, sorry, the total polymorphism of the graph of B. Okay, so this is uh, invariant is weaker in the sense that it contains less information than the previous one. And uh, indeed, every polymorphism, every polymorphism of the graph of, G, of B is a polymorphism of the relational reduct of B. So in that sense, it, it uh, it's weaker. So it's unclear to us whether this weaker invariant is enough to separate the tractable and the NP complete problems for structures with bigger domains than the Boolean case that we've so far considered. Okay, so let's get to the main theorem that we want to we want to show here. And that is the dichotomy theorem for Boolean structures. So if you give if you have a, a Boolean structure, then the CSP of B is in P. If B has an operation that is not essentially unary, or the polymorphism, the polymorphism clone of the graph of B uh, has a polymorphism that is constant or not essentially unary. Otherwise, it's the CSP is NP complete. And the proof relies on this classic result of post, which is that if you have a clone of operations on zero one, um, if this clone contains operations that, an operation that is not essentially unary, then it contains one of the operations, meet, join, majority, or minority. Okay, so let's go through the steps of the proof. They're fairly straightforward. so. So won't get too technical, so I hope you'll bear with me. Okay, so if the Boolean structure has an operation that's not essentially unary, then by post theorem, the clone generated by the operations of B has either a semi-lattice majority or minority operation. And by lemma two, which we already went through, um, we can assume that B has such an operation as in its language. And we prove that the presence of sub, such an operation puts the CSP of B in P. So it will be tractable. So in fact, we prove a stronger result in this case. For each finite uh, instance X, there will be at most a polynomial number of homomorphisms from X to B. Okay, so I'll go through each case. Maybe I'll go through the first couple of cases and you'll get the idea and we won't have to cover all of them, but there's only a few cases, so let's let's begin. So the first theorem is that if we have this Boolean structure, notice we've got this, um, this structure here. It has, um, it has, it's, a, it's on the universe is zero one, and we have S is some uh, operation, and then we might have other operations and relations, right? And in this case, we're going to assume that the operation is this meet operation, or maybe it's this, this join operation. If the structure has either of those, then the CSP of that structure is in P. And that's what we're going to show now. Okay, so 
if you fix a, a structure as the, an instance, um, then then this uh, this structure x satisfies. You can find this this structure x prime that that satisfies uh, all the equations that the original instance satisfies, such that um, if you have a homomorphism from x to b, then you also have a homomorphism from x prime to b, and vice versa. So this is uh, I, I probably let me let me try to say that again. So if you have uh, an instance x, you can find an instance x prime that satisfies all the relation, all the identities that B satisfies, and such that there's a homomorphism from X to B, if and only if there's a homomorphism from X prime to B. Okay. And uh, by lemma one, we can assume that that S, the S above, sorry, the S, so let me uh, make this clear. We can assume that the, the S interpreted in this structure X is a semi-lattice operation because of this fact that you can find uh, you can find a structure that satisfies the identities that B satisfies and has a homomorphism to B if and only if the original instance has a homomorphism to B. Okay. Okay, so if we define um, this less or equal, did you have a question? Okay, x less or equal to y, if and only if x is equal to s of xy, then for all h from a to b, the set, uh, this inverse of one, the inverse under h of one is a principal filter in, in this structure x less or equal, right? So a principal filter is this upward closed set that's closed under S. So, um, so we can we can see that by saying that uh, by seeing that if X is in the inverse image of H of one under H, and X is less than Y, then H of Y is uh, well. You can see this this. Uh, these equations. Um, right, so what, what we show is that um, that each homomorphism, if, if you can find a homomorphism, it corresponds to one of these principal filters. And of course, you have at most the number of elements in X many principal filters. So there are most that many homomorphisms from X to B. Okay, so this is the, the idea is that you consider um, if, you have a, if you have a homomorphism from A to B and then you consider its inverse image. So it takes some, it takes some elements to one and then you consider the inverse image of one. And then this is a principal filter in this structure um, X with this less or equal. And so if you want to count the number of homomorphisms, all you have to do is consider the number of principal filters. And of course, this is, uh, this is bounded by the number of elements in X in the, in the domain. So this is how we know that we can find uh, a bound on the number of homomorphisms from X to B. Can I have a question? So uh, you, you are using this reduction here. I assume that uh, this reduction doesn't change the number of homomorphisms uh, significantly going from X to X prime. Is, is this uh, yeah. correct? That's correct. So yes, that's a good question. So we're assuming as I think this is Alex Kazda who's talking now. Uh, yes. Yes. So that's a good question. So what we're doing now is going from an S structure as X. So that's the input instance. And then we want to now work with the structure X prime that uh, satisfies these identities. And Alex's good question is, well, if you start working with X prime, then now you have to know that 
you haven't changed the number of homomorphisms. And yeah, that is correct. We, uh, we have verified this and I'm sorry, I can't give you a, a very clear answer why this is so, but maybe someone, one of my co-authors could come to my rescue at this point and tell me. But uh, yeah. So, so this, the point is that uh, X prime is obtained by factoring X by a congruence. And it's a congruence that satisfies that every homomorphism factors through this congruence. So that you don't change the, the number of homomorphisms at all. Like uh, the kernel of every homomorphism from X to B would contain this congruence that we factor with. So that's the number of, so that there is a bijection between the homomorphisms from X to B to the homomorphisms from X prime to B. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antoine. This is my co-author, Antoine, is explaining that if uh, we consider homomorphisms from X to B, and then we have this other X prime to B, and, and there won't be more homomorphisms from X prime to B than there will be from X to B. So yes, thank you for clarifying that for us. Okay, good. So, uh, right. So we do similar things in the majority case where instead of having this semi-lattice term, we have, uh, we have a majority term, which is uh, some term that satisfies these identities that most of you, most of you are probably familiar with um, uh, and, and permute these, these uh, inputs um, and we do similar things with this and things seem to work out fine All right so um, it, we fix a, a structure with that signature and we have m that's a, a ternary operation we not, we're not sure what it is but again we can we can uh, assume that we have the, the input instance satisfies the same equations that the template satisfies. So we can assume that M is indeed a majority operation and it satisfies these equations. And using these facts, we're able to show that you have um, a bound on the number of homomorphisms, again, by the fact that you have inverse images of these homomorphisms must be principal filters in the lattice um, and so there's only so many that you can have right because there are only so many principal filters that you can have in fact that's bounded by the number of elements in the domain okay so um, that's the idea with the majority case and the affine case is similar um, what i'm calling the affine case if the operation is x plus y plus c um, you get a similar result so Okay, so the proof of the main theorem is that if you've got a B Boolean structure with finitely many relation and operation symbols, uh, then CSB of B is P is in P or NP complete. And the proof is first, if you the first case, if B has an operation that is not essentially unary, then uh, CSB of B is in P by these sorry lemmas. These were lemmas one, two, and three that I just showed you. Um, and then if B has only essentially unary operations, then uh, B is term equivalent to uh, B prime whose operations are all unary and the CSP of B and CSP of, of B prime are, are polynomial time equivalent by lemma two. And then the um, theorem of, of Fitter and uh, and Stewart and um, I'm forgetting the other author. Uh, Antoine, do you want to help me out on, on this? Uh, it's Florent Madeleine. Okay, so the uh, the paper by Feder et al. is uh, is is showing that the CSP of B prime and the CSP of the graph of B prime. Are polynomial time equivalent. Okay, so 
by Schaefer's dichotomy theorem, the CSP of the graph of B prime is in P if the polymorphism clone of, of uh, G of B prime contains an operation that's essentially not essentially unary and otherwise it's NP complete. Okay, so finally the, um, the clone, the, the polymorphism clone of the graph of B prime and the polymorphism clone of the graph of B are the same and that yields the, the final result. Okay, so I'll show an example now where this is the example that we were struggling with for a while to try to show that this result of, um, of oh, Madeline, Feder and Madeline and Stewart uh, doesn't, doesn't apply in general if you, if you take structures with operations that have higher arity than, than one. Um, and so this structure, we have, we found a structure uh, where the CSP of the graph of that structure does not reduce to the CSP of the structure. And it's very simple, but uh, it took a while for us to prove, or at least for me, I think uh, maybe my co-authors could have done it much quicker. But um, so if you take this structure, that's just uh, on zero one, and you have this binary operation where it's, uh, I guess this is called the Sheffer stroke. I don't know if, if that's what it's called, but it's, it's very easy to describe. This is the operation table. It looks like this. So zero times zero is one and otherwise, oops, sorry, this is a mistake. Okay, let me try that again. Okay, so this operation uh, is one only if both arguments are zero, otherwise the, the uh, result is, is zero. Okay, so um, if you consider the relation induced by this operation, what do you have? You have these triples zero, you have zero, zero, one, right? This is this first uh, tuple in the relation and then zero, one, zero, All right? That's the second. So you construct the relation from this, this operation and you get this and it's clear that, uh, that none of these operations, the, the, the join, meet, majority or minority is polymorphism of this, of this structure, this relational structure, right? Okay, and uh, of course the constant map into zero one is also not an endomorphism of B. So the CSP of the graph of B is NP hard, right? And uh, on the other hand, this operation, this operation, if you take this operation, uh, XY goes to X dot Y dot X dot Y, that's exactly the join X join Y. And um, okay, and so the the results we've gone through so far imply that this will be uh, actually tractable. So the the CSP of this structure is tractable, and yet the CSP of the graph is not tractable. The graph of the structure is not tractable. Okay, so let me move on and and in conclusion um, discuss some open questions and future work. Of course, this is uh, brand new stuff and, and we haven't really even scratched the surface of CSP for general structures. I mean, the, the initial question that I was interested in because I'm, I'm not really uh, a specialist in relational structures, but I'm more a universal algebraist. So I deal with algebras with just universes and operations. And so for me, it's very interesting to know when, when do you know you have a homomorphism from one algebraic structure to another? And that was the initial question that, that got me interested in this. But then uh, in working with Libor and Anton, it's clear that when you throw in relations, you have an even more general and more interesting question. When are there homomorphisms from these general relational structures to, to another general relational structure? So, um, 
this uh, obviously we haven't we haven't made very much progress. All we've done is we've managed to um, to answer this question for Boolean structures, but of course there's a lot of open questions when you consider bigger domains than Boolean. And so um, let's discuss a couple of these. And uh, so this raises a number of questions for, for developing a general theory of CSP of arbitrary finite structures, not just relational structures. And the reduction from CSPs of relational structures to CSP of algebras in, in Feder and Madeline Stewart um, is a polynomial time Turing reduction. And we'd like to know, uh, does this generalize to, or can we can we get a polynomial polytime many one reduction instead of just uh, this Turing reduction? That's the first question. And then another question is that we showed for a finite structure uh, B, the complexity of CSP of B depends only on the clone generated by the operations of B and partial polymorphisms of the relational reduct of B. And maybe the complexity of CSP of B is captured by the polymorphisms of the relational reduct of B. And that's something that is, is unclear at this point. And uh, finally, for the relational, uh, for the Boolean dichotomy of, of uh, above that we that we laid out, um, the main step is establishing that as long as B has an operation that's not essentially unary, then for all instances A, there are only polynomial many homomorphisms from A to B. Right, so uh, it's generally unknown what other properties of finite algebras imply such polynomial bound. And that, that would be an interesting question to resolve. Okay, so there are also some more questions relating to um, width and um, relational width and, and so forth, but I didn't discuss the results in our paper that have to do with that. So I think I'll just leave these on the slide and you can consider these if, if, uh, if that's what you're interested in. So, okay. And I'd like to invite now my uh, co-authors to give any comments or input that they would like to, because I think they they might have noticed some areas that I that I was uh, not very clear on, or that I lacked uh, a sufficient um, insight into that they would like to clear up. Okay. Thanks for the talk. Thank you. Some comments, questions, remarks, corrections. I'm sorry. What happens uh, if you have a, a purely uh, operational structure? So, a uh, homomorphism for algebras. Right. So, do we know the answer or anything? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in fact, the the in the Feder, Madeline, and Stewart art uh, paper, they they proved that in fact this is more general than the relational problem. So you can represent this relational structure uh, can be reduced to a CSP of algebraic structures. So this is somehow more general or more difficult than relational structure CSP. Don't they also give a reduction in the other direction? Showing that the CSP of an algebra reduces to the is equivalent to a CSP of a relational structure, up to Turing reductions. Yes. So somehow yes. it's the same pure relational structures and pure finite algebras. Yes, the same. Uh, but again, their their paper is mainly only considering the structures with unary operations, right? So in this case, they show these are equivalent. Uh, so, sorry, do we have a dichotomy or not? I somehow I'm a bit confused. A dichotomy for? For algebras. Uh, in this case, where we're just talking about Boolean structures, yes. No, no in general. No. Uh, so yeah, what what, do, what do we know in general? I'm, I'm confused as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> completely confused. <laughs> I'm confused as well because I thought there is no reduction uh, like 
it's not known whether uh, every algebraic CSP is equivalent to some relation CSP. Yes, that's correct. Only for unary algebras is what you For said. unary algebras, yeah. So okay. every relational it's CSP unary. is equivalent to an algebraic CSP where you only need like two unary operations. Yes. The framework of uh, just pure algebras can be more general. Okay, so it's open. Is uh, that what you say? It's yes. open. Yes. Ah, okay. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> and what does the dichotomy work uh, look like for 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 Boolean al uh, algebras? That should be what? somehow like for Boolean algebras. Yeah. So for, if you have. Yeah, for Boolean algebras, it's simply if it, there is an essential operation, then it's easy. That's what we proved. Yeah. And if there is none, then it's also easy, right? Uh, well, yes. It's always easy. Yes, yes, it's always easy. Okay, okay well, uh, then, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question whether there is a reduction going the other way. Yes. Because I, I suppose this paper of uh, Feder and others, uh, it's, it's from the times when... Uh, it's prehistory. It's medieval age. Yeah, essentially, if you want to uh, to say you can forget about this problem, you can prove that uh, you know, CSP dichotomy reduces to it, uh, and that's that's that. This means you can forget about it. It's too difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, so work. maybe they didn't even think about uh, the other direction. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe let me just comment because William told me, told us so on this last slide. Can you put there the last slide, please, William? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, no, 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 the last, this one. Yeah, so there are some questions about width. So I, I just want to clarify why these questions are there, perhaps. So for relational structures in general, we know that if it has bounded width, then it has relational width to three. Uh, uh, all the algebraic things, so uh, pure algebraic things, are solvable actually by uh, local consistency, so they have bounded width. <coughs> but the width is uh, strange, and uh, they do not have provably width to three. So it's also one thing. Uh, which is in the paper. So there, are, there is no collapse of, of width, at least not that brutal as for relational CSPs. Yes, thank you for having that. Some more questions? I guess it would be interesting to have a, a, a specific example of an algebra for which the uh, the CSP is um, is open. The complexity of the CSP is unknown. Mm -hmm. You know, some three-element algebra or something. It would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah new to me. This this question is is new. So we just managed to do it for just Boolean structures, and now from here we can consider other more general, hopefully more general results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some more questions? Uh, so, by the way, uh, your um, the positive side of, of your dichotomy says that you always have a polynomially many solutions. Is that is that it? Uh, yeah, there are at most polynomially many homomorphisms. Well, no, that's not correct. That's only in the case where you where the algebra has an essential operation. Yes. Because there is, I mean, the relational case is part of this, right? The purely relational case. And it's not true that you only have polynomially many homomorphisms. Well, not in general, but in this one case where it's 
where it's uh, tractable. Well, there are some tractable cases that come from the relation or purely relational setting. Okay. So the thing is that you have polynomially many homomorphisms, provided that your target algebra has an essential polymorphism, an essential operation. Okay. What's yeah. is an example yeah, which usually has yeah. um, many solutions? Mm. <clears throat> I think so, there are some, some results in CSP about the uh, structural restrictions, which which uh, classify when you have polynomially many solutions, something like this. So I have a question about this actually because it kind of feels like when we are talking about uh, uh, Z2 modules then uh, or vector spaces, uh, then we should have many homomorphisms. I, I'm not quite sure, but you're saying that it's polynomial in this case too, when it's uh, algebra with uh, some Maltsev operation, let's say, and we are mapping one to the other, uh, it's still polynomially many. Yes. Well, there is only like one Maltsev algebra here, right, For uh, which is Z2. And uh, so the, the number of homomorphisms from uh, between vector spaces is very small, right? It's determined on the basis. Okay, uh, this Z2 example is actually uh, cute because Z2, like relational Z2 is uh, very unbounded width, right? And the Z2 algebraic is bounded width. So. <laughs> But it has polynomial many, but we don't know in general, for example, for mass of algebras. I, I don't think this, we know it. Yeah, uh, Michal Kompacho mentioned that uh, from some results, it, uh, it is actually true for, I don't know, nilpotent, super nilpotent, something like that, or abelian at least. But, but even mass of in general, it's okay. So, so I begin to see why it's not ex uh, exponential. It's because the input algebra is not given like uh, uh, 0, 1 to 15th power. It's given by a list of elements. So, so I cannot go exponential. I guess that's a yes. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Wait, but like even if you go 0, 1 to 15, 15th power, then there is only like two to 15 of them yeah okay yeah 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 which is linear yeah sure okay if there are more questions i want to thank my co-authors for uh joining me in this project i think it was really fun to do and they've made it a pleasure it was really good working with them and they're both Antoine and Libor are great people to work with. So thank you very much. I'm sorry if I didn't do the, the work justice in this talk, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess um, that's all with the questions. So thanks uh, William again. Yeah. Um,